Hey guys, Brent Porcio of TopVelocity.net, and this is going to be the second episode of our Twitter questions at Top Velocity hashtag pitching, pitching tips. Um, so if you have any pitching tips for me, um, you want to keep this uh, episode or these episodes rolling or this show rolling, uh, go to Twitter, write your question uh, to me, right? And put at top velocity hashtag pitching tips. That way I'll see it uh, underneath the category of pitching tips and uh, I'll put it in the next show and I'll respond to your question in the next show. I want to thank everybody for the, uh, all the questions so far. I know I'm not going as fast as I like with these, but um, as long as these questions keep coming in, I'm going to keep answering them uh, no matter what they are. So let's get started today. I got my first question coming from TJ. It said, uh, where do you stand on the RDL for gaining leg strength? So that I'm assuming that's uh, referencing Romanian deadlift. So I'll just talk about Romanian deadlifts or deadlifts in general. Um, you know, it's, it's important to understand that there is a big difference between a deadlift and any type of Olympic lift. A lot of guys don't know what the Olympic lifts are. Just so you know now, clean and jerk and snatch. Of course, all the variations we can do in there, and we can call like, Sometimes we'll call it your front squats an Olympic squat, just because that's how you collect, catch your cleans. And, but deadlifts typically not Olympic lifts. Still incorporate them in the program, um, mainly because they isolate posterior chain. So they're gonna isolate the glute, the hamstrings, and the low back. Um, really more glute and hamstrings. That's what we're really trying to hit. It's a very inefficient lift, so it's lifted more farther from the body when you're, when you're starting, with the, starting with the bar. When we do any type of Olympic lift, it's typically a very efficient lift. It's very close to the body. So that's, that's really the key difference. But we would bring that in to help deal with the imbalances that typically come from Olympic training. Olympic training is very quad dominant. So we have to bring in as many uh, hamstring focused, glute focused exercises as we can. So that's why we're big on RDLs. Uh, we'll bring in deadlifts, um, good mornings. Um, so I'm big on RDLs. I love RDLs mainly for that purpose of balancing out the leg power to not be too quad dominant. We use a lot of glute and hamstring power in our throws. Um, not a little bit more studies have shown a little bit more for position players and pitchers, but pitchers still use a good amount of glute. Um, so yeah, that's very important, but not definitely not our, uh, our, our priority or our main focus, which is typically going to be in this approach, 3X pitching, the 3X pitching velocity program is going to be an Olympic approach, which is not going to be a deadlift approach up front, but we will bring those in uh, on the back side to help keep those muscular balances. Good question, though. Okay, so next one. What is the biggest mechanical breakdown you see in young pitchers, uh, 10 and under? Um, very good question. Um, it's like if I could develop my perfect baseball league for youth development, I probably um, wouldn't let 10 and under pitch at all. Um, specifically on the mound, um, you know, as far as mentally, I'd like them to get the experience, but physically, I don't want them to have the experience. I know I pitched young, but also tore my rotator cuff at 18. I guess unless a pitcher at a young age can keep, uh, develop a set of mechanics that he will implement all the way through the late in his career, then I'm fine with it, but you rarely see that. Um, typically, the reason I wouldn't let a young pitcher under 10 years old want to get on the mound or throw a lot on the mound is because their leg strength at that age is very poor. We typically don't get leg, good leg strength until we go through puberty, until our body starts really producing a lot of growth hormone, a lot of testosterone, and we develop some leg strength. Also, we ultimately tend to train at those ages, and that's another subject. I talk about we need to start training younger, typically like other countries do, um, as far as weight training. Um, but if those young pitchers don't have that leg strength, then what are they going to do? Then they're going to be very poor through the lower half, and then all their stress is going to have to come for the arm, and they're going to mechanics are going to be more through the arm, or they're going to be more overcompensating with the arm because of the lack of leg power. So we're going to develop bad mechanics at a young age. We're going to put more wear and tear on the arm. And it's one thing I really remember in the Jim Morris interview I did. It, uh, there's a great interview that I did on the site. It comes with the program too. It's called, uh, it's, I interviewed him um, after the movie, The Rookie, um, and he talked about his nine arm surgeries. And he said about the fifth surgery, Dr. Job looked at him and said, uh, Jim, you know, most of this damage that you've done to your arm came before you were 15 years old. 
to me that really hit me hard it really shows what I'm talking about that because we don't have the leg strength because we don't have the lower half mechanics if we pitch too young then we tend to put more wear and tear on the arm than we do at an older age there's even a study that found that little league pitches put the same pitchers put the same amount of torques on the arm uh, than some professional pitchers uh, mainly because the professional pitchers are more efficient they, they have the, the better kinetic movements uh, so typically that could be the case so it's very interesting when you look at that and it makes you understand why you, 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 you know pitching at a young age would probably not be the best idea unless you really got a good set of mechanics now what's the biggest breakdown from your question would be the lower half the lower half in a young pitcher is always a mess it's non-existent um, so trying to teach the lower half at a young age would be important, but if they don't have the ability, that's why I was talking about we need to train these kids strength, speed uh, at a young age because that would ultimately help them develop those better lower half mechanics. If you do look at my beginner's guide for those 15 and under, I am incorporating that um, and I would even do it uh, on as low as a uh, you know, 10, 8, 9 year old depending if the parents are comfortable with that and it's strictly on a light weight technique driven basis. All right, so we've got, hey Brent, was wondering what are the benefits to throwing like Jordan Walden? What if, would it help extension before foot strike? Of course, if, if, if you know my program, uh, triple extension has to occur just before front foot strike. Now in the case of Brandon Walden, or I'm saying Brandon Walden, in the case of Jordan Walden, he does it a little bit too early before front foot strike and actually leaps off the mound, but he's, in, he's able to make it work, meaning he's able to stabilize the front leg and get early hip rotation and create good hip to shoulder separation and throw very hard with it. So the timing for me with Walden's a little off, but he makes it work, okay? But yes, this approach has always been triple extension just before front foot strike. Dylan Bundy has a YouTube video of himself boxing and is a major pro prospect. What's your take on boxing in velo slash arm strength? I don't know, we've gotta be careful with that kind of logic. You know, we could say, um, you know, we could say uh, Trevor Bauer um, is a good rapper and he is a major pro prospect. Should we all be rapping? Um, I would probably say no. I don't know the correlation of rapping to uh, playing at the major league level, just like I don't know the correlation of boxing and playing at the ma major league level. I know it's, this is all very arbitrary data, so, um, and I'm, I'm just having fun with it. It actually is a good question because it's become very popular. But no, I don't see um, boxing really um, relating or correlating to ball speed. I think if anything, it develops joint integrity. Now you better make sure you're, you know, you're because you're going to be wearing out your joints, your shoulders, your elbows, uh, and if you're doing a lot of throwing with it, it actually could work against you. So if you're going to use his approach, just because that's what he did and he was successful, sometimes that's not the best way to go at things. But just be careful on the over fatigue, the overuse. But to me, that would be more, um, yeah, there'd be some, I guess, quick twitch movements in that, upper body plyometric movements in that, which is fine. Um, I just don't like the, uh, the, the, the overuse that we could fall into in the upper body. I, I, I typically very, I walk overuse in the upper body very carefully. So I typically don't overload my strength programs, a lot of overuse movements in upper body because I know I typically am gonna fall into overuse in my throwing. It just typically happens. So I try not to do it in my training. That's where I would probably advise against some type of you know, boxing where you're putting a lot of reps in your upper body, a lot of stressful movements with all that impact, and you could very quickly go into overuse, which is a major problem for pitchers. So be careful with it. Probably not my recommendation when it comes to velocity training. But yeah, of course, Dylan Bunny did it and he was a pro prospect. Just not sure that was the correlation. Around how fast do you have to throw to be considered a Division I talent and draft prospect? Of course, Division I talent, we'd have to be 90 plus with a second pitch and be very effective in the games with it, meaning show we can pitch with it. We're, we have good pitch ability. Um, draft prospect would be the same thing. Someone who could get to a D1 level uh, with a high fastball uh, is typically a draft prospect. Of course, guys, you can go to the D1 level with a mid 80s, high 80s fastball and have a really great set of pitches and can pitch really well with it doesn't really mean he's a high draft prospect. So typically, some extra pitches, pitch ability, and um, a 90 plus ball speed is really what's gonna guarantee that D1 spot and guarantee uh, being a draft prospect. 
Last one. I'm not sure if I answered this in the first episode. I'll go back at it again. Any mechanical device to leg lift versus slide step in initiating 3X? Uh, leg lift to slide step. Typically, if you look at the progression of the 3X pitching velocity programs, we are just very simply working out of a slide step um, when we do get to on the mound. Um, and because we, it takes time to develop how to lift correctly and load correctly and not lose it. So, and that typically comes in level three. So ideally, I would say start in slide steps, learn the lower half, and then as you get better at it and you want to progress and start to get more momentum and more load into your loaded position, then you can work more into your leg lifts. But ultimately, a leg lift potentially could give you more ball speed because then you're adding a little bit of momentum. But the problem is a lot of kids go wrong. They think, well, it's all about momentum. Just throw my leg up. No, it goes wrong. You've got to understand the basic set of mechanics in the lower half and a slide step and then progress to learning how to use the leg lift to assist some more momentum to more effective loads and more power out of those loads and then that will also have a good impact packed on uh, ball speed. But it has to really be in that progression. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you following this show. If you have any more questions for me, go to Twitter at Top Velocity, hashtag pitching tips and leave me your question, and we'll do another episode with all your questions, guys. Appreciate it, and keep working hard and keep throwing hard.